Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk a lot about so-called generalized surfaces. And indeed, in today's part 45, we will extend our definition of a generalized surface to so-called manifolds with boundary. We do that because it's needed for the generalized Stokes theorem. However, as always, before we start with the definition, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And you might already know, as a bonus, you can download a lot of additional material for all the videos with the link in the description. With that said, I would say we can immediately visualize what we mean by a manifold with a boundary. So for example, we could say that we have this two-dimensional surface inside our three-dimensional space. And now what is new for us is that we also want to include these two circles at the edge of the manifold. However, with that part added, it's not a classical manifold anymore because it does not look like R2 locally. So for example, let's say we take a piece of the manifold here and then let's make it flat with a chart. Then the image of this chart cannot be an open set in R2. Roughly said, we can definitely make the boundary flat, but it will always be there. Hence, what we have defined as locally Euclidean is not really given here anymore. But we can immediately see that we can easily generalize the whole thing by saying that our new generalized surface looks at the border like a cropped Rn. So we simply cut Rn into two pieces and then the generalized surface looks like one of the pieces locally. And exactly this idea we will put into a fixed definition. So let's first define our new half space, the truncated Rn. This one can be nicely visualized on paper, just pick the first direction as the x-axis and all the other directions as the y-axis. Hence here we have R and there Rn minus 1. And now in order to get the half space, we simply say we only get the things here on the left hand side. So the whole space stretches in all directions on the left hand side, but not in the one direction on the right. So this is our half space and we can easily define it as a set. So let's just say that we have n components in our Rn. And now the first one, x1, is not allowed to be positive. And that's the only thing we need. This defines our half space with the boundary given as this y-axis. But please keep in mind, it's a whole n minus one dimensional subspace. And now for the half space we need a name, so let's say we call it Rn again, but with an index, and let's use the symbol less or equal. So the symbol refers to the definition, but please keep in mind, it only refers to the first component. There are simply no restrictions to the other components. Okay, so this is the half space, and now our n minus one dimensional subspace here should also get a name. This one we call the boundary of the half space, and we also use the partial d here. And if we want, we can write it as a Cartesian product, namely 0 times Rn minus 1. And at this point, I should already warn you that this partial d is very often used when we talk about manifolds with boundaries. However, in that context, it usually does not denote the topological boundary as we have defined it at the beginning of the series. So just be careful, when you see the symbol, please note the context where it's used. Now, speaking of topology, obviously our half space is a topological space as well. This is quite clear because we always have the so-called subspace topology for subsets inside a given topological space. In fact, we can make it really concrete. Any subset in our half space is an open set if and only if we find an open set in the bigger space Rn. And to distinguish that one, let's call it U hat. And now the requirement we have for this open set is that the restriction of u hat to the half space is our u. Or more precisely, the intersection is just our original set u. So the picture should be quite clear. If we have our subset in the half space and we call it u, then it's an open set if we can extend it to a bigger open set in Rn. This means u hat is now a standard open set in Rn. So the conclusion is that our u is open in the half space, but it might not be open as a subset in Rn. 
This is important to remember, in the subspace topology our open set can have this boundary here. And now you might already guess that this boundary also gets a name with this partial d. So what we do is that we just take all the points from u that lie on the boundary of the half space. Therefore this is what we would call the boundary of u. But again as before it's not our topological boundary as we already have it and therefore maybe we should call it manifold boundary of u. So you see we already go into the direction of a manifold and indeed with our half space we are almost there. What we do is just to extend the notion of a chart for a manifold. And again maybe a picture is helpful, let's assume here is a manifold. And now we have the same idea as before, namely that such a boundary here is included in our generalized surface. Therefore this implies that we have two kinds of charts, one where there is nothing special, it's the same as before and one where there is a boundary included. Hence for the first kind we have a homeomorphism to Rn and for the second kind we have one for the half space. So not so complicated, we just have to distinguish these two cases. Moreover, if we want to go to smooth manifolds, we also have to talk about smooth structures on this manifold with a boundary. And there you know, this simply means that we have to look at transition maps. And as you might remember, this simply means that we have to look at the intersection here on the lower level and then we want to have a diffeomorphism. Therefore we have to define diffeomorphisms for the half space as well. Of course this is not a big problem, but we have to extend our original definition of a diffeomorphism. So in particular we just have to extend the notion of differentiability to the boundary points as well. And this is kind of easy if we just extend the half space to the whole space again. So let's say we have a map f from an open set u from the half space into Rn. And maybe let's already fix that as an open set v. And now u should be an open set in the half space, but v could be an open set in Rn or an open set in the half space. So we keep it simple and consider both cases together. This doesn't make a big difference because the notion of differentiability is about the points in the domain. More precisely we would say that f is called differentiable at a given point x in our domain u if we can just extend the function beyond the boundary and are still differentiable. So more concretely we would take an open set u hat in Rn as before and then we want to have a function f hat defined on this u hat. And now in order to keep it simple we can also say that all the values just lie in Rn. But of course the requirement we want here is that f hat restricted to our u is f again. This means for all the points in u there is simply no difference between f and f hat. And now we just want to have that this extension is differentiable in the ordinary sense at x. In other words, f hat now sees x as an inner point in the open set u hat. Okay, so with this definition you see differentiability in the half space also makes sense. And now as usual we can just extend that and look at maps that are differentiable at all points in the given domain. So this is a common differentiable map and if we also assume that we can invert it, so we have a bijective map now from v into u, then we can also require that f inverse is also differentiable at all points in the domain. And there you know, this is what we simply call a diffeomorphism. And moreover, obviously we can also go to a higher differentiability and define CK diffeomorphisms in a similar way. So in summary you see it's just a small technical point to extend the notion of a diffeomorphism to our half space. And that's all we need to define smooth manifolds with a boundary. In fact we can reuse everything we have already defined for smooth manifolds. So as always the starting point is just the topological space M and now we fix the dimension of the manifold with N. And then we say it's a smooth manifold with boundary if it satisfies three conditions. And essentially not much changes because we still need a Hausdorff space which is also second countable. And as we already know 
The third ingredient for a smooth manifold is that we have a maximal CK atlas. And simply there, we can just change it to an atlas with boundary. In the picture, this just means that we also have charts in the atlas that contain the boundary of M. This means the definition of the maximal CK atlas is exactly the same as in part 12. The only thing we have to add that also charts that map into the half space are allowed. In fact, everything we have discussed in part 12 still holds, you just have to add that these charts are also possible. And now we know how to deal with that because we know what a CK diffeomorphism for the transition map is. However, in the case that we have such a smooth manifold with boundary, we can also define the boundary. And at this point you already know the notation, we have curve dm. And it's not hard to define at all, because we can look at all the points on the manifold, for which there is a chart as before, so a chart that maps into the half space. And here we require that p lies in u, and h of p is mapped to the boundary in the half space. So these are the points that describe the boundary of our manifold M. And again, it's not the boundary in the topological sense, it's the manifold boundary. And in fact, we can already say something interesting about that, because usually this manifold boundary is an n minus one dimensional manifold. In the picture we directly see this, if we have a two dimensional smooth manifold with boundary, then this boundary here is one dimensional. However, it can also happen that we don't have any boundary at all, because everything here also holds for our standard smooth manifold without any boundary condition. This is the thing, we have completely extended our original definition. Therefore, in this sense, a smooth manifold with boundary can also be a standard manifold without any boundary. Okay, then I would say, let's use the next videos to look at examples and how we can use this definition for the integration. So I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.